Addressing himself only to the others in the L.I., and for that matter, writing under a pseudonym, Gil's Evain, Chegolov was contriving a secret for his friends to share. At the same time, he was writing a manifesto to change the world. A mental disease has swept the planet, he pronounced. Banalization. This state of affairs arising out of a struggle against poverty has overshot its ultimate goal, the liberation of man from material cares and has become an obsessive image hanging over the present. Offered the choice of love or a garbage disposal, young people of all countries have chosen the garbage disposal. It's good stuff. To choose the garbage disposal was to embrace reification, to become a garbage disposal. But to choose love was to escape the prison of the alienated self. And so, Cheglov's lover, dreaming in his own cathedral, was not an isolate, not a babbling cripple hiding in his private Notre Dame, but a citizen of a new world ready to speak. He might say what the lover in Paul Auster's 1986 mystery, The Locked Room, says, quote, by belonging to Sophie, I began to feel as though I belonged to everyone else as well. My true place in the world, it turned out, was somewhere beyond myself. And if that place was inside me, it was also unlocatable. This was the tiny hole between self and not self. And for the first time in my life, I saw this nowhere as the exact center of the world. This is utopia, and utopia means nowhere, but within the L.I., all obvious absurdities and impossibilities were shrugged off. Who says you have to choose between love and a garbage disposal? The L.I.'s project was the rational extension of the fairy tale. That utopia, the exact center of the world, was where the L.I. meant to live. Ultimately, Gray wrote, all that was involved was the simplest thing in the world, wanting to make your dreams come true. And its enemies were equally simple, sterile, subjective fantasy on the one hand, and on the other, its objective counterpart, the world of art. Someday one would confront the final enemy, the existing order. The first battle, as Alexander Trochi wrote in London in 1964, trying to recapture his days as a member of the L.I., was, quote, to attack the enemy at his base within ourselves, end of quote. Thus the esthetes of the L.I. forbid themselves to make art, and in the same spirit they forbid themselves to work. As a provisional micro-society, they meant to live out the future in the present. In a future present where the tools of mastery already in place in the most advanced societies would sooner or later make work redundant and leisure unlimited. This was the material base on which they floated their vision of a world of constructed situations. Drifting through Paris, they looked for that world and for their next meal. The L.I. believed that by replacing work and entertainment with the deriv, art with detourment, and the productive social roles still enforced by a society living in the past present with a role of pure consumption, the consumption, the L.I. meant of its time, it could reinvent everything each day, reinvent everything or lose everything, as de Borde said in 1972, when the L.I. in its day, a group known mostly to itself, was an experiment Debord could imagine only he remembered. Quote, time frightens. 
It is made of qualitative jumps, irreversible choices, occasions which will never return. That was the burden assumed by those who committed themselves to a life of permanent novelty. Each day the members of the L.I. would walk the streets, not as prisoners of wages and prices, not as employees, shoppers, or tourists, but as travelers in a labyrinth revealed by their wish to find it. Each day they would case the spectacles of art and advertising, news and history, pillage bits and pieces, and make them speak in new tongues. In a counter language, in every instance leaving a small hole in the great spectacle of social life, at least as it governed the group's own space and time, playing a, quote, game of freedom, end of quote, a, quote, systematic questioning, end of quote, the board said, quote, of all the diversions and works of a society, a total critique of its idea of happiness, the ally would become the masters and possessors of their own lives. It was, in fact, a desperate search and a utopia that contained its own contradiction product of a wish that at once went beyond art and found itself returned to it. Quote, when freedom is practiced in a closed circle, end of quote, Du Bois wrote in 1959, looking back on the L.I. and his film Sur le passage de coquet personnes à travers un assez court unité de temps, on the passage of a few people through a rather brief moment in time. Quote, it fades into a dream, becomes a mere representation of itself. What looked more like freedom might be no more than parole, Woolman wrote bitterly to the rest of the group in early 53 after they rejected the board's plan for an attack on a girls' reform school. Quote, of course you dream at night if you can always sleep, but life threatens there are cops at every turn, and by the signs of the bistros, the girls your age are scarred by youth. It was a cruel search. What was missing, the board said, was felt as irretrievable. The extreme uncertainties of subsisting without working made excesses necessary and breaks definitive. One after another, those who gathered around the board were tossed out or dropped away. Quote, suicide carried off many, end of quote. He said in 1978 in his film, In Jeremias Nocte at Consuma Marigny, then quoting memoirs as it had quoted Treasure Island, quote, Drink and the devil took care of the rest, end of quote. But from 52 to 57, as long as the L.I. lasted, others always took their place. You can see them, the international fully pre present around a single table as the idea was set forth. Once again, revolution begins in a wish for right, which is a wish for justice which is a wish for harmony, which is a wish for beauty. We cannot live without beauty, but art can no longer provide it. Art is the lie we are no longer living, and it is the trick, the false promise of beauty, the compensation for the destruction of harmony and right that keeps everyone from living. As a trick, art must be suppressed, and as a promise, it must be realized. And that is the key to revolution. Art must be superseded, and we, who have suppressed art in our own space and time, can make it happen. The new beauty can only be a beauty of situation, which is to say provisional, and lived. The Situationist International was founded on the conviction that this closed circle could be opened. That this new world, at first to the private, almost abstract discovery of a separate few, could be explored, explained, publicized, and glamorized until the demand for it would become overwhelming. Overwhelming in common as the Situationists linked that demand to the inchoate manifestations of refusal and revolt they were citing all over the planet. Manifestations they were certain of an unfathomed dissatisfaction with the quality of life in modern society, scattered bits of a negation of its idea of happiness. They had a plan, drawing the finest talent from across Europe, then from around the globe, the SI would devote itself simultaneously to, quote, the ruthless criticism of all that exists, end of quote, Marx, 1843, and to, quote, bringing to light forgotten desires and creating entirely new ones, end of quote, Cheglov, 1953. And then the SI said in June 1958 in the first number of its journal, International Situationist, 
quote, we will wreck this world, end of quote. Quote, everyone must search for what he loves, for what attracts him, end of quote, they wrote then. On the way to discovery of what you loved, you would find everything you hated, everything that blocked the way to what you loved. To walk down that street would be to find yourself on a terrain where the smallest obstacle demanded a total contestation of the existing order. In the beginning, this walk would take place as if on a battlefield in a war no one understood was being fought. That was the burden passed to readers of the decline and fall of the spectacle commodity economy. The SI's virulent pamphlet on the riots in the black ghetto of Watts, California, in August 1965 a maelstrom that left more than 30 dead and the first rebellion in history, the SI said with delight, pressing the dispute between love and the garbage disposal, quote, to justify itself with the argument that there was no air conditioning during a heat wave, end of quote. To most, it made no sense that when the far more impoverished blacks of Harlem and Newark were silent, the relatively comfortable blacks of Los Angeles were burning and looting, many with pride and joy. To the situationists, Citing the boast of one Bobby Holland, a young Watt sociologist who swore, quote, never to wash off the blood that splashed on her sandals during the rioting, end of quote, it made perfect sense. Comfort, they wrote, will never be comfortable enough for those who seek what is not on the market. The SI was a group of critics, tipping back in their cafe chairs as others acted. They did not apologize, as DeBoard said years later, where there was fire, we carried gasoline. <laughs> Quote, theoretical criticism of modern society in its most advanced forms and criticism and acts of the same society already coexist, the SI said of once. Still separated, but both equally advancing towards the same realities, both talking about the same thing, these two critiques explain each other. Neither is explicable without the other. Our theories of survival and of spectacle are illuminated and verified by actions which today seem incomprehensible. One day, these actions will in turn be illuminated by this theory. The decline and fall of the spectacle commodity economy was meant to be part of the event it analyzed. It was written in Paris in French, but translated into English and distributed in America before it appeared in Europe. The question the SI was raising would have been familiar to some in the USA in 1965. How, the situationists asked in language a little different from that of the 1962 Port Huron Statement, the founding paper of Students for a Democratic Society, do people make history starting from conditions pre-established to dissuade them from intervening in it? But the answer the situationists gave might as well have come from Mars. Quote, looting is the natural response to the society of abundance. The society not of natural and human abundance, but of the abundance only of commodities. The looting of the Watts district was the most direct realization of the distorted principle. To each according to his false needs. But... Real desires began to find expression in festival and the potlatch of destruction. For the first time, it is not poverty, but material abundance that must be dominated. This was delirious and also seductive. Seductive because it was telling. It was, the SI thought, the battlefield, and from June 1958 to September 1969, the pages of International Situationist plotted its frontiers. <laughs> 